Hello and a very warm welcome to everybody listening into our webinar this afternoon, uh, exploring opportunities in Japan. This is part of our Explorasia series, a series funded by the European Union as well as the Berlin Senate and promotes the extension of economic activities into Asian markets, amongst others, of course, Japan as today. My name is Oliver Hasse. I'm the Managing Director of ENAM, the Innovation Network for Advanced Materials. And next to me is Taha Adnan, our Marketing Lead and Scouting Specialist. A very warm welcome and a big, big thank you to our uh, speakers today, which are Hiroikuji Kusoge from Jetro Berlin, as well as Chika Yanamoto from Crosby, uh, who will be giving presentations on the subject after a quick introduction from my side. So allow me a couple of minutes to expand on what is ENAM and uh, what we are doing. So ENAM, as I already said, is the Innovation Network for Advanced Materials. That is, we focus on helping innovators and companies in the space of advanced materials and related disciplines to bring their products to the market, to refine their products or to collaborate. We have a built up an ecosystem which comprises corporates, small and medium enterprises, a very important uh, economic force in Germany, research institutes such as universities, lots and lots of startups and of course investors who fund these startups. We have built an ecosystem around our three main programs that we run to help startups. One incubation program called Advanced Materials Lab, an acceleration program for seed stage startups in the space of advanced materials called Advanced Materials Competition, as well as a later stage acceleration program, looking at uh, helping these startups to get their first major funding rounds. This is called the Advanced Materials Competition Scale. We can do this with the support of our network, which consists of our members, uh, many companies from Germany, as well as Japan, I have to say, um, research institutions, government entities, our legal advisor Weidenauer, as well as our partners uh, in the investment sphere, i.e. IPP Ventures from Berlin, Hightech Gründerfonds, uh, as well as others. Um, beyond and above, of course, we have lots and lots of startup members who've joined over the years and uh, are contributors to the vibrant uh, ecosystem life that we are offering our members. Besides our startup programs, we run a couple of series of workshops and other events, uh, one of which is investor workshops. They are focusing on the concerns of uh, hardware deep tech investors. Um, talking about uh, the challenges of, of deep tech investments, etc. We have a customizable format called roundtables where we deep dive into any topic that uh, fits our main purpose, i.e. it could be technology, it could be methodology, or all kinds of other things. We offer our founders, the startup members, uh, an, a monthly get together where they can change amongst themselves, but also ask directly to us uh, for support or questions that, that they may have. For our corporate members, we run innovation challenges, i.e. we scout and uh, make promotion around a certain technology topic um, to get the best ideas to solve these specific technology problems or challenges. Um, as of late, we have restarted our podcast series. Um, our host is just next to me, Taha, um, exploring novel approaches, interesting approaches uh, in the startup and material science area. And it should be um, appearing in monthly or maybe bi monthly um, steps over the course of the year. And finally, and this is where we come back to Explorasia. We are running our Explorasia program now in the second year where we focus on, as I said before, internationalization of startups and uh, most importantly today, internationalization and entering the Japanese market. So 
without further much ado, I would now hand it over to Hiroyuki Kusoge, who will be talking about Jetro's activities and how Jetro can help you to get foot in the Japanese market. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you very much indeed for your kind introduction, Oliver-san. So I'd like to uh, start with my presentation. So wait a little bit, moment. Can you see this uh, uh, PowerPoint? It's starting to share, it's coming on. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, okay. Uh, so again, thank you very much for having me in this uh, great opportunity. My name is Hiroyuki Kosuge. I am the director for Invest Japan and Open Innovation for uh, uh, especially German companies, but also could be also for non-German non companies. And so I've been here in Berlin since uh, last April. So if we have been uh, one year as soon, and it's actually my second uh, time to be posted in here in Berlin as a general person. And actually, it was I was here in 2016 to 2017. At that time, the the innovation uh, ecosystem was uh, developing here in Berlin. And I was uh, so uh, uh, happy to come back to Berlin, and I so I've seen uh, so much progress. Uh, uh, in, in Berlin uh, for the past years. So I'm very much uh, looking forward to connecting with you today. Uh, so I'd like to uh, briefly uh, talk about uh, overview of JETRO. And so JETRO is uh, the abbreviation of Japan External Trade Organization. We are a government related organization promoting mutual trade and investment, also innovation uh, between Japan and the rest of the world. Uh, we, we established in 1958, so it's more than 60 years. So we have a, a long history uh, as an organization. And we have uh, all, uh, over 70 overseas offices in 55 countries. And our headquarters is in Tokyo, but we have uh, also uh, a big presence in Osaka because Osaka was uh, the former uh, headquarters of Jetro. And also uh, we have another uh, uh, other uh, institute uh, called JFUDO, which is a, 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 a promotion uh, organization of uh, Japanese uh, food uh, products that overseas markets. And also we have an institute of developing economies uh, uh, focusing on the emerging uh, uh, countries and regions. And yeah, we have, a, uh, as I said, uh, we have a, a huge network uh, globally. And in, in Europe, we have, uh, in Germany, we have three offices now. And so here in Berlin and Düsseldorf, it's, uh, it's the biggest one in Germany. But also we <coughs> opened um, another one in Munich. Uh, two years ago, and so in, in Europe, we, we have Germany uh, is the biggest presence uh, for us, and so um, um, so we are trying to, to find potential uh, uh, innovative uh, German companies and European companies also within our uh, network, but also we are always uh, cooperating with our, our colleagues in other countries as well, and I, as I heard that in in uh, in Ina, uh, you have not only German startups but also uh, startups or companies from all over the world. So I'm I'm, uh, I'm more than welcome to uh, connect to you with our colleagues in every part of the world. And actually, in Japan, we are. Also, I'm going to talk about it later on, but we have a, a also a strong network domestically in Japan. And Japan ha, uh, com, uh, comprises of uh, 47 uh, prefectures, uh, but we have uh, uh, at least one office in each prefecture. So, and if you are interested in, in each uh, local region, we can connect you 
who is our colleagues in、uh, everywhere in Japan. That's the advantage that JETRO is having. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the, the main activities of、uh, JETRO.、Uh, so we are actually focusing on the four pillars as our、uh, main activities. And so the, the, we put the first uh, uh, as uh, 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 innovation and in invest Japan. So we are facilitating、uh, innovation through、uh, in world foreign direct investment FDI in Japan. And also, we are uh, supporting uh, uh, overseas expansion of startups. I mean, it's, it's,、uh, it means uh, uh, we, we support. Uh, uh, We provide support for Japanese startups, but also we uh, uh, support uh, uh, non Japanese startups like, uh, like uh, uh, the members of、uh, INA. And so, the second one is、uh, I'm actually also the director for Japanese uh, uh, export, uh, 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 export of Japanese food to overseas markets. Uh, uh, for me, it,、uh, for, the, for the German market. So, actually, I'm, I'm uh, uh, also、uh, coordinating some activities to sell or promote、uh, products like sake、uh, or the、uh, green tea or、uh, yeah, some,、uh, some Japanese、uh, food products uh, uh, on a daily basis with some experts in this, in this area. And the third pillar is uh, it's, uh, uh, it's focusing on the Jap、uh, Japanese、uh, companies. And basically, we are supporting overseas businesses of Japanese uh, uh, small and medium sized、uh, enterprises. So, because we have,、um, um, uh, as I said, we have a, a huge network in, in, in local areas in where many SMEs are located. And so, it's an、uh, important、uh, activity for us. And also, we, are, we have a, a strong function、uh, for research. And、uh, there is another、uh, colleague participating here, also uh, uh, called、uh, Ms. Nakamura. And she is doing some research on、uh, German、um, markets, economies, or、uh, politics. And so,、uh, because, uh, um, um, Because of this、uh, current global crisis, Japanese companies are quite giving attention to the、uh, situations, current situations of、uh, Germany and Europe. So、uh, we are, are providing some uh, uh, information uh, through our、um, business uh, news or、um, magazine uh, to, uh, to, the mem to the members of.、Uh, Of Japanese、uh, companies in Japan or in Europe. So, this is also the quite、uh, important activity、uh, for us、uh, currently as well. Okay, so next, I'd like to、uh, talk about the, the situation of uh, Japanese uh, the market in Japan. And as uh, uh, we, I said, Uh, we are、uh, quite active in the innovation, the startup uh, uh, ecosystem area. And this is、uh, just one example of a, a report by the, I think it's、uh, by the US uh, uh,、um, um, research uh, companies that data. And so Japan uh, is uh, regarded as the、uh, number nine. Uh, uh, in the, as, as one of the global startup ecosystems、uh, rankings. And, and so,、uh, yeah, so the, the number is uh, uh, increasing uh, recent, uh, from recent years. And so, you, when you have a look at on the comparison of Tokyo and the top、uh, three cities, Uh, in this report, so performance, funding, talent, knowledge, market reach are、uh, quite high levels in, in, in this chart. And、um, but one,、uh, one, one missing、uh, point for Tokyo is like,、uh, according to the report, the, 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 the inter 
uh, connection uh, within the ecosystem in, in Tokyo is rather a raw. Uh, so it's uh, so maybe I, I guess that many uh, Japanese startups or companies in this ecosystem are rather uh, independent, uh, not uh, uh, cooperating. Uh, that's one <laughs> characteristic. The uh, Tokyo uh, startup uh, ecosystem, uh, according to this report. <coughs> but uh, we have an uh, ecosystem not only in Tokyo, but also other uh, regions of Japan. So currently, the, uh, the Japanese government is uh, uh, trying to foster uh, local uh, Japanese uh, uh, cities as uh, global startup cities or startup cities. Uh, and so some uh, I mean, regional uh, governments and regional uh, research institute or universities or uh, 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 medium-sized companies or uh, venture uh, companies in universities are trying to, to, to develop the, in, in the ecosystem in Region. For example, in, uh, in Kyoto, <coughs> Kyushu area in the south part of Japan, or Sapporo and Hokkaido, uh, or uh, Tokyo Consortium as well. So, so we can say that the, 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 uh, if we look at the, in Japan, there are uh, lots of opportunities, not only in the mega city, I mean, the biggest cities, but also some pro, uh, local regions. <coughs> and actually, this is a uh, 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 finding that based on the uh, our survey to uh, to uh, for the companies uh, relating to Japanese. Uh, um, uh, um, uh, market and so many say that uh, as a, a activeness of doing business in Japan, uh, the number one <coughs> is income levels and high and custom volume for products and services uh, is high. And so uh, many uh, consider Japan as the uh, Japan Japanese market itself as the uh, huge market. <clears throat> for no for uh, foreign companies and also uh, number two uh, uh, it's ex ex uh, extensive inf infrastructure it's praised as number two and so uh, Japan has uh, uh, developed uh, infrastructure for for foreign companies and also uh, it's uh, Yes, the Japanese consumers uh, in general are quite sensitive to uh, added, uh, uh, highly added value and trends in uh, products and services. And so this is also uh, um, uh, so uh, the, the characteristic of Japanese uh, uh, market. And you can see other act 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 activeness of doing business in Japan here. <laughs> And also, when when it comes to uh, uh, the attitude toward open innovation in Japan by uh, foreign and uh, affiliated companies in Japan, and so basically uh, more than seventy percent uh, of uh, foreign affiliated companies in Japan are seeing uh, positiveness about working on open innovation in Japan. <laughs> And so, yeah, uh, many have already uh, uh, implemented or will uh, continue to expand uh, open innovation activities in Japan. And the, they are uh, seeing, it's quite interesting that uh, they are seeing that Japanese small, medium sized enterprises uh, are the potential partners for open innovation. It's, um, yeah, I think many startups are seeing the Japanese big companies uh, uh, potential ones for open innovation, but uh, Japanese uh, SMEs, uh, because they uh, basically have quite high 
uh, 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 technologies uh, or uh, uh, products and, and some um, uh, R&D uh, uh, activities. So, um, yeah, I, I would suggest that you uh, 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 for, uh, focus not only on Japanese uh, big uh, giants, but also uh, Japanese SMEs uh, for, for your uh, uh, potential partner. And I would like to also mention the the, the uh, factors uh, that are inhabiting business expansion in, in Japan. So many uh, say that high cost of doing business is uh, uh, considered the uh, the number one factor that is inhabiting business expansion in in Japan, as you might imagine. And also difficulty securing personnel. Yes, and when I when I'm doing some activities to 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 to, to support Japan, uh, German companies uh, uh, for their FDI in in Japan, some people uh, tell me that the, the uh, finding uh, right uh, uh, human resource. I mean, especially for like. Uh, Technology a, 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 a staff with English uh, uh, capability is uh, rather uh, uh, difficult, and so uh, yes, when you uh, try to enter and establish your office uh, in in Japan or uh, your your. Uh, uh, to start your activities in Japan, maybe you should be a, a, a paying more attention to this uh, factor as well. And yeah, and ex exclusivity and distinctiveness of the Japanese market is also uh, considered as uh, one of those uh, factors. Yes. Um, Okay, but uh, I'd, next I'd like to uh, uh, introduce one uh, success case of a German uh, startup, which it's uh, 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 has been um, um, successful in, in, in Japan in Japanese market, and it's called indoor urban farming. Uh, it's or 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 um, it's called infarm. And actually, the, this company is actually quite famous in, in Germany, I think, in, especially in Berlin. And yeah, they have just become unicorn um, last uh, December. And what they are doing is uh, like they, are, uh, they have, um, excuse me, uh, uh, urban farming uh, solution called Infarm Plant Hub. And so they are growing uh, vegetables in stores using what they call uh, smart uh, farming units. And actually, I've also seen one in uh, in Berlin, and it was uh, quite uh, 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 it seems quite uh, uh, popular. And, and yeah, and the, uh, recently uh, they have introduced this uh, 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 business to Japan and in cooperation with uh, uh, Japan uh, Railway East. Uh, it's like a uh, Deutsche Bahn in, in, in Japan. And so the JR East uh, has a, 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 a supermarket called Kinokuniya, which is a, a, a rather a uh, luxury uh, uh, one and 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 if I'm introduced this uh, smart farming uh, 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 units to uh, to to Kinokuniya in Japan and they are expanding <coughs> their uh, business activities in in Japan so it's uh, uh, quite uh, and and actually Zetro supported some uh, consultation uh, um, to to inform when they uh, opened their uh, office in Japan and still we have a, 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 a relationship with inform and this is one uh, uh, um, best practice uh, in terms of uh, supporting uh, startups uh, by Jato. 
And also there is another case uh, that uh, it's called uh, FUM GmbH. It's also a, a, a company uh, in, in Berlin uh, providing uh, inno innovative technologies or uh, particle characterization and analysis of suspicion suspicions and uh, emulations uh, uh, and and uh, the uh, so uh, the, the uh, product is widely used uh, for uh, for R and D activities and management uh, of international companies in chemical, food, cosmetics, or uh, pharmaceutical industries. And uh, yes, we again we we uh, just uh, supported this company for the expansion in Japan, like uh, consultation on company registration, uh, market information, or uh, some incentive uh, uh, programs to this company. And also, uh, I'd like to introduce our uh, quite uh, new uh, uh, activities. Uh, to to promote uh, Japanese and German uh, uh, innovation, and it's called Japanese German German Japanese Innovation Initiative 160. Uh, so last year it was the uh, 116th anniversary year uh, since uh, 1861 when Japan and Germany um, Prussia at the time. Uh, signed a treaty uh, on a friendship, shipping, and trade. And Sujeto so and GTAI, it's a, it's a German trade invest, invest uh, by the uh, uh, German government. Uh, uh, our counterpart agreed to, uh, to work together uh, to, to promote uh, innovation between these to countries on the occasion of this uh, memorial year. And yeah, and so we are trying to, to, uh, uh, to use our uh, uh, networks and uh, activities uh, together uh, and, and to, uh, to, cre uh, to create innovation. Uh, which uh, uh, can be uh, 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 which can solve some global matters such as an aging society, the COVID nineteen uh, crisis, global warming, with these uh, issues uh, together with some uh, Japanese and German governments and industrial uh, supporting organizations. And it's uh, it's not only about uh, Japanese and German uh, innovation, but also, yeah, we are targeting at not uh, I mean we are not targeting at uh, Japan and Germany uh, only, but also we are uh, uh, trying to provide uh, practical solutions for anywhere uh, in the world uh, by Japanese and German. Uh, innovation uh, uh, activities. So it's uh, uh, a new initiative uh, to cooperate uh, with uh, GTAI and just started. And okay. And the, you, you can actually uh, uh, see the kickoff seminar, which uh, we had in, in last uh, December. Uh, uh, as an archive YouTube uh, video, and actually uh, we we have a, a ex, ex, uh, distinguished guests uh, such as uh, uh, Miss Saori Dubur uh, from the uh, executive of BASF, the uh, chemical uh, uh, German uh, big uh, big chemical company, and is, uh, as a, a keynote speak, speaker for the. Uh, uh, German Japanese innovation, and maybe you can find some insight uh, from her uh, uh, speech uh, through this video, and also some uh, top uh, uh, guests such as ambassadors, uh, our, our our chairman and the GDI CEO uh, joined uh, this event, and also uh, Infam was also one of the uh, uh, speaker. Uh, 
organizers of this event, and also we we had some uh, um, um, uh, guests from guest speakers from universities and university or some uh, uh, startup ecosystems. So I I uh, recommend uh, uh, watch uh, this video to. Uh, to, to, to gain some insights from the best practices of the uh, Japanese and German, German uh, innovation. And also we are uh, trying to create some follow-up events uh, starting from this year. And uh, we are currently discussing uh, uh, to have some joint business networking events uh, with GTAI. And also we are uh, trying to have another uh, this um, uh, event or seminar to show uh, more best practices uh, on Japanese, uh, German, Japanese, uh, uh, German, Japanese innovation uh, for the uh, for to to, uh, to create a more uh, successful uh, innovation. And uh, 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 last but not, not least, I'd like to also introduce uh, our another uh, activity called uh, JBridge. It's a, a little bit new uh, platform to connect uh, Japanese companies and uh, foreign uh, companies, uh, especially uh, startups. And uh, we are uh, uh, we have a, a network of Japanese companies joining this platform. And uh, we sometimes have uh, events uh, by the Japanese companies uh, to, to show their challenges that they would like to, uh, to solve with uh, foreign startups uh, digitally, and what we always call a reverse pitch by Japanese companies. But also we sometimes ask uh, startups uh, to, to make uh, some uh, pitches to Japanese uh, companies in the uh, JBridge platform. So we are uh, uh, trying to be more active on this uh, platform. And when we, when we have uh, 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 some events relating to your uh, industry, I'd like to uh, in, uh, invite uh, you uh, for the uh, uh, for these uh, uh, activities. Uh, in the future. Okay, thank you very much. That is uh, all from my presentation today. And uh, my name is Hiro Kosuge. And also we have another uh, colleague called uh, uh, Marina Riesland. Uh, Miss Marina Riesland. Uh, so yeah, if you are uh, interested in the Japanese market, please contact us anytime to this uh, email address. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed. That has been a very, very interesting uh, presentation, very insightful on information that you need when you want to enter the Japanese market. Thank you very much, Hiryu uh, Kosuge. Mm -hmm. um, and now I think we collect questions uh, for the Q&A after the next presentation. Um, so I would uh, pass on right away to Chika Yamamoto to present um, Crosby and what Crosby can do to help companies cross borders. Okay, let me somehow now it's usually it doesn't really ask me, but now it's asking me to do the security change. So bear with me a little bit, please. No worries, all good. Okay, so uh, it's, it says I have to reopen Zooms. Okay, so I don't know. What, so bear with me two minutes, please. I will be back soon. Sorry. Otherwise, I cannot share my screen. <laughs> So maybe then 
in the meantime, if there are any questions from the audience, um, please type it into the chat or the Q&A. Um, and uh, we would then address it. Maybe, maybe one question to you from my side uh, here, um, mm -hmm. So you, you're based in Berlin and covering the whole of Germany, or have you got other offices across Germany? Yeah, uh, thank you very much uh, for your question, uh, Oliver-san. And actually, we just Berlin is covering 10 uh, regions of uh, Germany in northern uh, Germany to east, uh, east part of Germany, which okay. means that such as Ham, Ham, Hamburg or uh, Sachsen uh, or Niedersachsen, like and uh, maybe it's easy to say that uh, Jetro this set of is covering North Rhine, Westfalen, and Rhineland, uh, preferred Hessen, and Sauerland, and Jetro Munich. Uh, is covering about the Wurttemberg and to buy it, uh, buy it. and other than that, we uh, we general uh, Berlin uh, in charge of the regions. Okay, thank you very much. And there we have uh, Chica again. Yep. Do you see the screen okay? We can see your screen perfectly now. Okay. Then, yeah. Something is not closing. Okay. Okay, so thank you very much for waiting and welcome everybody to the Explore Japan with Cetra and Crossfield organized by Ainam today. And thank you very much Ainam team for having me. Uh, it's great to be here for this information session. My name is Chika from Crossby. Crossby is a Berlin and Japan based accelerator and company that we support cross border market expansion and cross border open innovations among the startups, corporates, and the municipalities bridging between Europe and Japan. We work with Japanese corporate, yeah, municipalities, and then also the agency like Zetro here. So how do we do that? We do it by matching with companies, also by looking for financial support for projects. And we do this through our partner, Japanese corporate like CVCs, as well as we get governmental fundings, for example, for German based companies, uh, governmental funding for innovation called Boshin Gustulake, and so on. So, for any support for market expansion and financial possibilities, please get in touch for more details. So, now I'd like to introduce what it's like to do the business with Japan. So um, what do you think about Japan when you think about entering to Japanese market? Is it a big market? Is it possibility of global corporate partners? Or is it like language barriers or specific business customs? So although there are cultural differences which require entry to Japan is a little bit more with effort and concert, concentration is it? Japan is considered to be quite a desirable market because it offers a big market like just Kosuke-san from Jetro mentioned, as well as possibly your IP is very safe and protected compared to do business in some other countries. And we at Crossby, we connect startups and corporate so that they can do the bi-directional collaboration and the open innovation together. So what are the challenges when we think about the Japanese expansion? Um, I think there are many similarities between Japan and Germany when corporates and startups are involved. We talk about similar qualities and so on, but we also have like a strong hierarchies in cooperation, bureaucracies. 
But Japanese corporates are very eager to find good technologies and solutions that we can solve the challenges together and grow and thrive together. So, so on top, in addition, now factors come into work with Japanese companies. There are some cultural differences and business customs, time zones and languages. And those things need to be considered, but they are big opportunities. So the strong opportunities I see it for European startup is around this. For example, this is an upcoming startup event in Japan, focusing on environmental developments and sustainable developments. And EU, Europe has been one of the top kind of thought leader in terms of executing sustainable goals in private sectors already. And European startups have been already implementing such strategies in their development product and services. Japanese corporates are very keen to find new technologies around sustainability and so on, which Japanese startups are catching up, but corporates believe that there are more advanced ones also in Europe. That's why we are helping for Japanese companies as well as municipalities to meet right startups and technologies which can solve sustainable implementation in Japan from Europe. So the second, uh, there are so many, I think there are lots of um, funding available from advanced uh, from Japan for advanced material related startups. They are specific, these are specific like VC funds investing in early stage startups in material field. But in Japan, there are more CVCs than VCs in this area. There are a huge amount of corporates who have CVC arms looking into hardware materials related sectors uh, with sustainable technologies. And not only big corporates, as Gosuke san also mentioned, it's not the secret that Japan has globally known corporates in large market share, but they are also like hidden champions. These are like hidden champion companies are really coming from not only like a big corporate, but from smaller and SMEs. And they, but still they have the best technologies supplying for, for example, automotive companies focusing on specific parts, chemical processing, but holds number one share in that field in the world. So it is really lucrative for the European startups to work with not only big corporates, but also like hidden champion, these companies in Japan who are not always in Tokyo, but all over Japan. And this is going to be really a great gross, big growth partner for you. So now the question would be how to meet your perfect match and as soon as possible. So those who have been introduced to Japanese business culture knows Japanese business is also relationship based just like Germany and how to find the relevant business partner and those candidates to build a relationship. It is quite important. And there are four possible standard ways to do it. Two are through closed search. For example, work, the partner like us, Crosby, for example, we work with corporate who are looking for solutions for their particular use cases of who are looking for new technology partners. And these informations are not out there, but if you know who is helping corporates like us, then we, will, we can be the good introducer and door openers for you. And then other two are more sort of like in the open areas. For example, governments and municipalities, they have a program, acceleration program and a business matching program. And you can search it online and they are constantly coming up. And through those programs, you can meet um, local great partners like hidden champions, as well as local big corporates. And the fourth one is that the corporate 
themselves run acceleration and pitch competitions. You can also search for it. And if you know that who would be your big corporate partner, often they have it, such information on the website. And there's like an event site in Japan that you can get such information from. So these are probably four standard way to how to get to your business partners. So this is one of the kind of way how we do technology scouting for corporate. And if you know how we work with, maybe you can kind of navigate some of the um, feedback groups that you could have. And for us, when we do startup searches, we work with corporate partners to identify and set their tasks and what kind of you know, in, uh, startup they are looking for. Is it even a startup? Is it just a technologies? Or is it like a complete solution to achieve some specific KPIs? And then we create a challenge seat. And then we distribute this seat to our partner networks to look for technologies or services. And we will find the startups which is gonna be probably like 15 or 20 startups who could be solving such a problems. And then we will do the interview with each startups, not the corporate yet us, um, to understand your technologies better so that we can explain that technology to our client. And then after that, the client will say that we would like to know more of these technologies, then we will set up the call with the uh, uh, corporates. So these are the processes we take. And if you are part of this process, and if you could help us to understand you better, there's a higher chance that you will be meeting the customer. So it is super important not for me to say this, but to focus on the customer feedbacks, it's the journey to really understand the customer feedbacks and understand the market. But you know, sometimes um, feedbacks is not always taken positively, but I really suggest to take all the um, feedbacks very positively. This is just a part of the dialogue. You know, when they say that this is not fitting into the market, then it's a, it, that's a kind of a signal to understand what the market means. And maybe the market, you know, in Europe and the market in Japan might be different. Some regulations might be different. Expectations are different. Uh, how it should be produced are different. So it's really a good idea to get any feedback, all the um feedback saying not right now to understand the market situation so that you can develop the product and services better. And that is a journey and uh, meeting like customers, getting feedbacks and meet customers through which way um, it is difficult to figure out first. However, the people like us or Jetro can really help navigate through this kind of maze like new market entry. So it's really like a great idea. Like I know is now doing this to introduce us directly to startups so that you can get in touch with us so that we can help. I think we all would like to help and then you all want the shortcut and how to get there. So please get in touch, both of us. So one of the things which is quite important is so Japan tends to have experience doing business with European, not European startups yet, but startups based in North America. And I'd say from my personal perspective, Europe is not always explored enough compared to the North American market. And how, what I hear from our corporate clients is that one of the advantages of European startups is that European startups 
can offer, for example, technology itself, and they are easier to work with because they are more flexible. And sometimes US startups has already like developed product and then they are more selling more. But at the, on the other hand, European startup are more co collaborative mode. So the suggest, what they are looking for from European startup is in terms of technology itself, how strong the technology is. If you have IPs, how can you protect compared to competitors? How could that be stand out? And if you can um, bring this out in your presentation and pitch, uh, although the service itself might not be what it's fitting to the customer, but the technology when the technology stands out a lot, there is a higher chance that you might be working with them. So another important thing to approach Japanese companies is that let's say they are not really like a first penguin type. And although they are looking for top-notch state-of-the-art technologies, they are a little bit like me too, and then they don't wanna be the first penguin. That means they are always looking for your track records and also reference customers as a part of their due diligence to work with you. So if you are like idea stage and don't have like reference customers, then you might have strong IP that might be good enough or there's a other way, possible way is to have one of them as a kind of technology advisor in your company so that you can build a relationship with them. And when it's in R&D phase and feasibility study with sending samples and so on, then you probably would need some of the reference already. And depending on which stage you are, then find a company that you can work with. It may not be the big corporate, it may be a smaller company, but to start building the track record somehow so that they feel like, okay, now we can also do this together. So it is often said in Japan, it is harder to open the first door because of this like due diligence in terms of references. And it is true that opening the first door is not as easy as second door, but when the first door is opened, it is said that it's a, it is not that difficult to open the second and third door. And the, company like us, as well as Jetro and some municipalities and accelerators really wants to help to open the first door. So one of the things that I have to mention is that is um, language part. So Japan is not strongest in English. And the manager, for example, at Innovation Front may speak really good English, but that doesn't really mean that the rest of the team in R&D are fluent. And most probably not, that's often the case. So there are different ways to do it, but it's often important probably to start hiring someone who can, uh, who has the work experience in that particular area or hire a consultant until you can hire somebody on the ground in Japan. And so, uh, having us and uh, Jetro as a navigator so that you can land onto the right door for the shorter time. So that's like the quick run through of what we do and how to work with Japanese corporate. And yes, so looking forward to seeing you in Japan or to start helping you to go to Japan. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Chika. That has also been a very insightful uh, presentation, uh, framing nicely what, what uh, Crosby and how Crosby can help, but also beyond that, I think uh, what to look for and add when entering the Japanese market. 
Um, before we open the round of discussions, let me ask you a quick question from my side. You've mentioned the, uh, and that basically the question goes to both of you. Um, you've mentioned, Chica, the, the uh, financial support that the German government gives here to uh, research intensive companies. Uh, if I, as a, as a German company, enter the Japan, or to enter Japan and thereby the Japanese market, uh, would I be also available for public funding of whichever sort, innovation, setting up jobs, et cetera, et cetera? So for that particular one, it's not ex exactly for expansion, but it is for innovation. And if expanding into Japan will bring the new novelty into a product and so on, the resources spent on that is considered as the innovation. So as a whole, it will be calculated for the innovation funding. Mm -hmm. and, and from the side of the Japanese government, if I set up operations in, in Japan, is there also funding opportunities? There are different funding opportunities from government as well as the municipality levels. And the municipality levels offers different um, amounts for different conditions. And uh, so the <laughs> one of the challenges, sometimes it's written in Japanese, even if it is applicable for non-Japanese companies, like setting up the new office, you will be able to get, let's say like uh, 5,000, euro per person so like if you have like five people then you will get for five people up to one year in some municipalities and then some other municipalities offer something else like free offices for how many months and it is important to know how you would like to set it up and uh, Jetro has the overview of whole municipalities in whole Japan to help uh, identify where would be the good place for your needs. And would you think that is also still in the financing, uh, on the financing side of things, would you think it's advisable to get on board a Japanese investor if as a startup, I would like to maneuver into Japan? Yes, definitely. I think it's, uh, Japanese um, CVCs are really interested in investing in European startups and then often, it's, it's now the number of the VC is increasing, but there are lots of CVCs who would like to do the uh, collaborative um, approach. So their investment may not be as much as what VC will give it to you, but it is definitely the great in amount for you to get started in Japan as well as to grow together. Mm -hmm. And, and for a small company, uh, i.e. startup, are there any tax privileges in the first years of existence, uh, which we don't have in Germany, apart from the Forschungszulage, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Good question. Do you know, kosuke ah, could, could you say that again? Sorry, I, I... Are, there, are there any tax breaks or tax privileges for startup companies, i.e. companies that are loss-making uh, in the beginning? Uh, yeah, maybe, um, please, uh, let me start to, uh, the information on that. I think some, we have some tax information in Japan and maybe I could pro provide some information later. Super. Thank you. I very haven't much. encountered yet. Let's say it this way. Okay. Well, that, those were my questions. Now I'd, I'd open up to the audience, uh, and see if any further questions are. Now is the chance, uh, but I guess if there are questions after our event, you both would be happy to uh, help companies uh, clarify questions that they have. Um, I don't see any more, any questions at the moment in the chat. So I would, think that um, we may close here. I would like to take the opportunity again to thank you very, very much for your contributions. That has been extremely insightful. 
Um, and I think very helpful for everybody listening. And that probably explains why there aren't any questions because uh, it has been very, very comprehensive and uh, therefore informative. Thank you very, very much to uh, both Chika Yamamoto and um, Hiroyuki Kosuga. It's been a great pleasure having you here and I'm looking forward to future collaborations. Um, and if there are any questions about the German ecosystem, of course, uh, we are happy to have also.